All right. Time for a little 2 p.m. Bible study. We're going to go through Genesis 21, 22 and following. Um, if we get done with Abraham's temptation today, the testing of Abraham, excuse me, uh, then we will uh, not have class today, uh, tomorrow. But if we don't, then we will. Uh, but it be no problem. Hi, Linda. The Lord be with you. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I got one thing to do, and then I'm I'm uh, able to go. Remember, this is a conversation that we're having. Uh, this conversation is between us. Uh, you can ask your questions and you make your comments in um, um, on the live stream, and I will respond to them as I see them um, in the order that I receive them. Hi, Terry Lynn. The Lord be with you. I didn't, you know, Marilyn, I, um, how's it going, by the way, Gene, good to see you. Um, I don't remember what I said yesterday, so, uh, I've slept since then. <laughs> and when you're, and when you're, and when you're, and when you're churning out content, um, you, you, uh, uh you, you, it, it's, it's like, oh, Heidi's here. When you're turning out content, it goes in like it, you like get it done, and then that's really basically it's uh, it's done. Um, I have to ask in advance why God gets to test Abraham with something that he knew was wrong. Um, when we get there, when we get there, we'll um, we'll tend to it. Um, we'll tend to it. 22 and following. All right. And away we go. Hi, Suzanne. Good to see you. Cindy. All right. <clears throat> So our dear friend Ishmael, Ishmael's okay now. Ishmael's going to grow into a great nation. Ishmael's going to be all right. Okay. So we've got nothing going on there. Um, our next section, um, i got to close the live stream or it's going to distract me. Uh, our next section is uh, starting with 22. Um, in that day, uh, it happened uh, that Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, Elohim, Imaka, everything, um, uh, the Lord is with you in all which you do. So uh, first things first, um, the Lord is with you in all that you do. So, um, uh, this is interesting. Swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my posterity. But as I have dealt, um, as I have dealt with you, so a deal with me in the land. Um, and how I've dealt with you is uh, ka chesed. Now, um, I, I, I need to, um, I, I, I need us to sort of pause here because the word... Um, uh, the word isn't, the word isn't very, very helpful here. Um, kindly is a, a little, a little weak. Uh, the Hebrew word is, um, chesed, which, uh, which means, uh, sometimes when you say a Hebrew word, you, you, um, um, 
you, you guys have some phlegm in the back of your mouth. That's what I love about Hebrew. So chesed. You know, the more that you like scratch the back of your throat, like you're doing a, um, like you're doing a, a, a strep throat test, the, the, the better. All right. Um, as I have dealt with you, um, with chesed, um, and, and I, I want, I want, um, I want us to, uh, as sort of, uh, chesed is sometimes translated, um, mercy. Chesed is sometimes translated love. Um, chesed is sometimes translated, um, uh, kindness. Um, but if you want to catch the, um, the meaning of, of chesed, um, well, sweet. Pastor Yeager, excited to have you with us. One of my former students. If you if you want to um, if if you want to get uh, the meaning of chesed, you got to sing a little journey. You know what I'm saying? Highway run into the midnight sun. Wheels go round and round. You're on my mind. It's faithfully, but it's faithfully specifically. Um, it's it's covenant faithfulness as I have been faithful to all our agreements. Um, so also I'm going to need you to be faithful to all your agreements, uh, with us, Abraham. And this is Abimelech and, and the commander of his army. Um, and this is just, just very, 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 very important. I love the delay between, uh, when I say something ridiculously stupid and when y'all react to it, it makes me laugh. And there it is. One bad singing. That was about a minute later. Um, so we've got this business going on where um, uh, so swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or my descendants or my posterity but as I've dealt with you faithfully Faithfully, if I've dealt with you with chesed, covenant faithfulness. That verse that has um, his mercy endures forever. That's chesed too. His, his covenant faith. God is faithful to his promises. When he makes a promise, he keeps the promise. When he make when he says something, he does it. Um, uh, it's not enough uh, that God does what His Word says. You see, because then God can still um, He can still uh, uh, law you. How's it going, Ann? Um, uh, uh, it's not enough. Uh, it's not enough. It's not enough that He does what He says, because that's not gospel yet. Because what if he does and he says law to you? Well, then you got a problem. But if his if his mercy and if it, if his if his chesed he keeps his promises, and his chesed is wrapped up in the giving up of his son, that's the kind of faith. That's the kind of kindness. That's the kind of mercy you want. You want God to keep his promises. You, know, you want God to keep his promises. You want God to keep his promises. So like, as I've dealt faithfully with you, deal faithfully with me. And what about Abraham swearing here? I thought God wasn't, and we weren't supposed to swear. Well, um, Luther has a little section on this where he says, look, this is a civil, you know, this is like you standing there and they put the Bible in front of you. Like, please tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Um, I suppose a Christian could go like, um, if you'd get me a, a Koran, please, so that I can lie. I don't want to lie on the word of God. I, I want to lie on something that isn't the word of God. <laughs> Do you have a book of Mormon there for me to not? I just love that. It just absolutely makes me smile. Um, it just makes me smile. It just makes me smile. It's good stuff. Um, so, so, uh, uh,
I would take this as a civil story. That's the way. Um, that's the way Luther takes this. Is is like Abraham. Um, one, there's no prohibition yet on swearing, but two, also, um, this is like Abraham's making it, making an agreement with him. They're making a uh, civil agreement with him, and you are allowed in court uh, to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. And so in the same in the same vein, this is what um, Abimelech and his buddy are asking of. Um, of Abraham. 24. And Abraham said, I swear. You know what Abraham said? Abraham said, I swear by the moon and the stars in the sky. That's like, uh, I'll be there. Is that like boys to men with a Southern accent? I think it was. I think it was. Um, that's two songs, McCam, not three. Eh. Hey. The, 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 the administrative assistant's giving me all sorts of trouble today. This is a problem. It's hard to find good help these days. I only sang Journey once. We'll have to get Cindy's judge's approval on whether me singing the same song twice counts as two different songs or if it counts as one. Anyway. When Abraham, now, whoa, hold on. Now, see, they got this, they got this, they got this agreement going on. And now Abraham is going to, um, he's going to um, argue with, reprove, found to be right, correct. So Abraham corrects Abimelech about a well of water. That Abimelech servants seized. Um, and Luther makes a point to say, okay, so so like life as Abraham isn't peachy. Okay? Um, life for Abraham isn't peach, peachy. Um, it's, 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 um, is it all for one? Wow, Bobby Joe. No, it was also, yeah, it was also sung by boys to men, too. So says the Google, Bobby Joe. <laughs> Thor's had a rough day, friends. He's over there. Um, see, there were, um, uh, they were children in the building. And uh, they were, they were children in his building. Because, um. Uh, uh, the folks in McHenry got me this sign that said uh, uh, Thor was the building manager and uh, uh, they gave it to me as I was leaving and uh, it's on the door there uh, that Thor is the building manager and so he was he was very very disturbed and was very 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 upset at and on high alert that the um, that the children for VBS were in the building and so he's, 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 he is beat because you can only sit at that door and growl under your breath um, for so long before, uh, before you get tired, you know, because being a dog is hard work. Um, so Bimelech, Abimelech's servants, and what, 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 what Luther says is, and, he, and, and Luther reads between the lines here. He says, look, Abimelech's people they know Abraham's name change. They know Abraham's name change. They know that Abraham is the father of many nations. They know the promise to Abraham. I mean, all you got to do is ask Abraham. Uh, Abram? Uh, no, I go by Abraham now. Well, how's your wife, Sarai? Uh, she goes by Sarai, Sarah now. Well, why? Well, because God's made me the father of many nations. He's given me this land. Well, this isn't your land. Um, that's, that's a song too. This land is your land. This land is my land. Anyway, um, but uh, uh, so you've got this moment where no doubt that uh, 
Sue Pellegrini in the house. Um, you've got this, um, um, and the Harringtons. You've got this moment where probably a little jelly. Uh, they go and they and they and they wreck a well. Um, they wreck a well uh, on Abraham's property. And so Abraham goes to Abimelech like, what, what your servants are wrecking well. We just made a promise together. We just made an agreement together. I told you that I wasn't going to mess with you, but I have to mess with you now because your um, um, because your servants did this to my well. Uh, and 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 that's well within the agreement. Calling somebody out for their sins is it is it um, is it not being faithful? It's being the utmost faithful. So like um, when if you sin against me. Um, I have two options. Um, I can simply forgive it, uh, which most people who know me, that's my go-to. I just simply forgive sins. I, uh, my sins are so great. I forgive people before they're sorry for them, before they realize it, maybe even while they're still being a bad person. Um, that's just the way I roll. But the, another way of dealing with it would be to actually call somebody out for their sins which is also a Christian thing. So both are Christian ways. If you, if you want an example of Jesus just simply forgiving somebody while they're not even sorry, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. If you want a, a, a place where Jesus calls people out, it's everywhere, uh, where he's turning tables off. You take in my father's house and turn it into a den of thieves. Um, brood of vipers who warned you. To, well, that's, that's John the Baptist. But you, but you got it. Both are in the scriptures. So... Um, what, 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 um, yeah, it's love. It's love. Um, that's love. That's love. So it's, it's a loving thing. The God loves those he reproves. If he doesn't, if you don't correct, um, someone, it, it, it's not loving him. So hi, Pat, the Lord be with you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Goodman had a great plenary at uh, Concordia, Chicago last uh, last year, um, and he had a great line about love. All right, it's like how loving is it? Um, like if kids are playing in the street, be like, uh, um, I'm gonna get my kids out of the street, but your kids, they can just get run over and die. If they wanna, if they wanna, if they wanna get run over, that's great. But my kids. Come on in, in. But a lot of times, you know, and that's the same with closed communion. Um, I'm going to make sure some people live, but others, it's okay if they die. But uh, anyway, so we handled the swearing. We handled the, the, um, uh, the reproving. Um, Abimelech sort of dodges the issue. I, 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 I don't know who's done this thing or, um, or you did not tell me this thing. And I, I have not heard it until today. You tell he's a king. It's like oppressor. I don't know anything about that. Um. So uh, is 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 Nick Marcellus in the house? Oh, interesting. Um, fifty-one. That's the only one I know who's named fifty-one. So, what Abraham does is he he took sheep and oxen. Hi, Beth, the Lord be with you. He took sh sheep and oxen and he, um, and he gave them to Abimelech. And they make a covenant. Um, and Luther, and, 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 and Abraham sets aside seven lambs, small lambs, of the flock apart. And he says, these seven ewe lambs, you and me and all other people, sorry. This is a sheepy joke. You will take these seven, these seven lambs you're going to take from my hand 
that this might be a testimony for me that I dug this well. So you're going to take these seven. Now, what's interesting about this is, is Luther makes the case. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, I need to find volume four. That's 24. That's one. That's two. Oh, shoot. Is that four? That's four. There we go. Um, that's not helpful. We're going to drag this down here. We'll tend to it. But, but Luther makes the case that the issue is one of, um, it's, there's a Hebrew wordplay here. And it, and it's around the word, um, uh, Around, it, it's a reference to what Abimelech did. I want to take you back there. Um, so Abimelech tells him to swear. Let's see if I can find the word for to swear. Um, there it is. So um, he, he tells him to, to, um, to swear. But, um, the same root for to swear is the root for the word seven. And so there's a lot of sevens in this because, um, because, because Luther is, um, because Luther is because because Moses is because Abraham's making a, a, a word play on the word seven. So here it is. It should be noted that the Hebrew word sabah is ambiguous. It has two meanings, seven and oath. And just as this German word a hut means a hat and a guard and the word rod means advice or wheel. Accordingly, in this passage, the word um, sabah has both meanings, both swore and sevened. So there's a word play here. And so 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 Abraham's very cleverly saying, okay, so you made me swear that I was going to be good to you. And 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 so so you made me seven that I was going to be good to you. And now I'm going to bring seven lambs to you that I'm I'm good to you. All right. I mean, this is just, um, uh, this is Luther again. Accordingly, Abraham wants to extract the oath from the king by means of an extraordinary wisdom and a very fine hint, since the demand, it, 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 it openly would be rather impolite. So he puts seven sheep before the king, since the word means both seven and oath. And Abimelech understands what, what, what he wants. So, um, in Godfather movie terms, Abraham gives him an offer he can't refuse. I give him an offer he can't refuse. Um, and this is just so very clever. You should just take into account how very, very clever Abraham is. That, okay, so you made me swear. So I'm going to put seven sheep in front of you, seven being the same word, in Hebrew for swear so that you remember that, you know what? It's great that God is with me and God is for me and all this. But if you don't do um, what you're supposed to do, then God who is for me isn't going to be for you anymore. Capiche? Um, uh, it's, it's a, um, it's a very, 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 um, it's a very, very, uh, um, that was a great Godfather impersonations. I had to take a sip to wash that out. But I, I, this is, so, so you got this strange text where, which begins with swear to me, swear to me. And, um, and, and, and Abraham's like, okay, I swear. 
And then like the next verse, we got a problem with a well. Well, okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make an agreement. And, and they're going to cut a covenant here. And that covenant um, is, remember how I, I, I said, like, I like covenant to be translated promise when God is the subject of it. When God cuts a covenant with men, he's the one that puts himself on the line. When God, when we make covenants with each other, we're just making an agreement. So God takes our word, berith, covenant, testament, and uses it as he see fit. But when he uses it, that word takes on all that God is and doing. And so what I would say is Abimelech and um, and Abraham are going to cut a covenant. They're going to cut a covenant. An animal's going to die. They're going to cut this covenant. Um, 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 Okay. Um, and that, that's a covenant that, 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 that is, you know, so like when, 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 when like, when like Christian pastors teach that a covenant is a coming together of two parties, it's not wrong. That's what the word means. When God does it though, it's a one-sided deal. Like what does a one-sided deal look like? Well, it looks like this. I promise you, never destroy the earth by water again. That's my deal to you. That's my deal. I promise to never destroy the earth by water again. And the sign of my covenant with you is I'll put my bow in the sky. Okay? Another covenant in the scripture, uh, which is a promise. I'm going to make you a great nation, Abraham. I'm going to bless those who bless you and I'm going to curse those who curse you. Like if you could number the stars in the sky, so shall your seed be. Through you, all nations of the world be blessed. So like I think that when God is making a covenant with men, you should just call it promise. Because that is that is the most um, that is the most clear way that it's going. But here, Abraham's going to make a covenant with, with Abimelech. It's just a covenant. It's just a deal. It's a contract. It's like me buying a house. It's like me, um, yeah. I hope that's clear. Is that clear? Is that clear? I can't touch, see from the class whether it's clear or not. So, yeah. Look at Pastor Yeager going. God's faithful to His word always. That that well that that's the word chesed. So you want God to be chesed with His agreement. You want him to be faithful to his promises. Right? So um, his, his chesed endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. His covenant faithfulness endures forever. Back to the text. So this is that part in which, which there's, there's like, hey, let's... Um, Let's make an agreement, okay? Therefore, that place is called Beersheba because both of them swore an oath. It's all wrapped around the word seven, okay? So um, uh, the place is called Beersheba because um, they swore an oath. 32, so the place is called... Um, so they made a, uh, 31. Um, and so the place is called Bear Sheba, um, which means well of the seven or well of the oath. Is that my buddy Mark Doobie in the house? That's my buddy Mark Doobie in the house. One of the wisest elders I've I can ever remember having in my in my first parish. What a great, great man. Even a good man who's an Aggie fan and um, a Dallas Cowboy fan. My good friend, Mark Duby. Um, uh, 
so, so Beersheba, remember I said names mean things. Beersheba means well of the seven or well of the oath because that, that, that Sheba word can do, um, can do double, double duty, double duty. Um, uh, there's a lot of wordplay here, but it's such a gift. So very rich. And, and, and I want you to be clear on why this is happening. Um, because, uh, you, you need to know, why do we, why do we hear about this? Um, why do we hear about this? Well, let me tell you, I love this Luther quote. I'm going to find it right now. Um, why are we hearing about this problem? Well, here it is. This is, this is Luther. This is a new trial. I have repeatedly stated that God leads his saints like Abraham, like you and me, um, in this life, in a matter so wonderful that one trial immediately follows another. Think about this. So Abraham goes from the whole problem with, with, um, uh, uh, with Sarah and Ishmael to this problem, to the, um, uh, to the test, the testing in chapter 22. There's nonstop. I tried to watch the, um, uh, my buddy, Will Robinson, is he here? I, I can't tell. I'm sorry. I, I cannot tell who's here. So I, unless you say something, but, um, I, I tried to watch on Netflix, um, Lost in Space, all right? And my problem with Lost in Space season two was, okay, are you ever going to have a normal day? Is there ever a normal day on this show? Everything is always life-threatening. Even, like, Game of Thrones has, like, filler episodes. Um, SG-1 and, and, and Atlantis and, and other sci-fi shows. Every show you have pretty much normally has a big event, toward the end of the season, but there are some filler episodes that allow you to just simply veg through them. Yeah. Danger, Robinson family. Well, my problem with, with Netflix season two of Lost in Space is like, how many times can the world almost come to an end in 10 episodes in a season? Well, I'm an unbeliever because Luther says, you know, you think God doesn't love you when you don't get time off. When it's drama after drama after drama after drama after drama after drama after drama. And you look at God, you're like, do you don't love me? You don't love me? Um, Luther says, no, that's, that's the life of a Christian. The life of a tr Christian is one emergency after another emergency after another emergency after another emergency. So when you look up a guy, you're like, don't you love me? Remember this. Remember Abimelech and the well. Because this, this, this pericope teaches us that, um, that, look, the Christian life is full of... Um, The Christian life is full of drama. Got in, the, in the South, we say drama. Drama is the sort of thing you watch on TV. Drama is the sort of thing that happens in voters' meetings. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The person's like packing up their stuff and they're leaving and they're never going to come back over the color of the carpet. Um, not that I've ever seen that before. So, um, you've got, uh, you've got this, uh, um, um, you've got this, so you, so what you want to learn from this today, cause we're not going to get into it. So we're going to have tomorrow for overtime, but you want to learn, but just as misfortunes impel a prayer and faith, so when the saints are delivered, they are impelled to give thanks and praise to God's mercy. Nevertheless, a distinction must be made between the two exercises of faith and faith itself, just as works differ in necessity from the promise itself and from that of faith. So what I, I so like, like the, the, uh, 
the cool thing to take note here is the cool thing to take note of is is that when the drama happens on top of the drama on top of the drama when you feel like your life is one disaster after another when you feel like you've just moved from hot messes one hot mess to another when when that's the way you feel in life you should thank god thank you lord for refining my faith thank you lord think about that the next time the doctor's like hey we're gonna need you to take another test instead of going the world's gonna end God hates me. You should be like, all right. Praise God. He loves me. I could have cancer. Oh, you would never react that way, would you? Would you? No, instead, God suddenly doesn't love you. But, but like, like, um, I'm sorry, but we're going to take a look at a mass that's on your liver. It's about the size of a football. Um, all of a sudden, I'm going to die, and God doesn't like me, and God hates me, and I start getting angry and grumpy and sad and, 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 and all of that. God is, God is carrying you through all of these things in order to increase your faith, to have you rely less on yourself and more on Him, so that we, you would understand um, that God is such a God as to care about you. Um... um God's that caring for you. I mean, so like the next time you can't pay your bills, you're like, praise God, I don't have enough money to pay my bills this month. You know, like, uh, praise God, it might be cancer. Instead, you only thank God for the things that work out. Like, have you ever thought that he gave you the cancer for the sake of your neighbor? That, 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 oh man, I still haven't fixed my chair, but that, 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 that the cancer is, um, is, is, is so that you might be a, a, a faithful witness. Um, um, to the gospel, to faith, like father Abraham, who doesn't say, um, you know, get on board with what I'm doing, Abimelech or else, but instead brings out seven, um, seven sheep. It's like, these are yours. <laughs> but instead, you know, the world's going to end because you need another, you need another test. Now, look, I'm, I'm in no way, shape or form saying that we shouldn't be sad and weep when people weep. Um, that's the Christian life to people who are weeping. To people who are hurting, we hurt. Um, but I'm saying you personally and your faith, live your faith out like Father Abraham. Like if it's if it's one trial after another trial after another trial after another trial, praise God for that. Because he's refining your faith. And Abraham needs his faith um, refined. Let's just review. He's an idol worshiper. Uh, he's a liar. Um, probably a bad husband. Um, uh, in the sense that, you know, first, you're my sister. Second, um, sure, I'll sleep with Hagar. And, and, and like, fourth, um, uh, yeah, she's my sister again. It all depends on the meaning of the word sister. Sister, sister. Anyway, um, it's from uh, White Christmas, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, uh, let's get down, let's get, let's get done with this text. Um, uh, therefore that place was named Beersheba, well of the seven or well of the, of the, of the, of the oath, because both men swore an oath. So they cut a covenant. See, uh, this word right here is they cut a covenant. Cuts are, um, covenants are cut. They cut a covenant. See, uh, uh, you can see it right here. It's probably blurry. I'll make the, I'll make the text bigger for you. Um, they cut a covenant. That's what that Hebrew word means. 
So they cut a covenant. Cut that out. No, no, different cut a cut. Um, they cut a bereath. They cut a covenant at Beersheba. Uh, then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Oh, oh, just when I think that Pastor Lestico can't go any lower, he goes and totally redeems himself. That's a quote from Dumb and Dumber. Here it comes. You ready? I'm going to read the quote. The Christian life is big enough to have both things go on side by side. Bittersweet days, rejoicing and suffering, making anxieties known while giving thanks to God, sorrow and joy. Please check out the song. That makes it worth having him around. I'm just going to say it. Just when I think that you can't go any lower, Lloyd, you go and totally redeem yourself. Um, Abraham planted a, a Tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called the name uh, on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. And so um, we come to an end of this chapter, which only took us three days to do. Our Lord can defeat death and hell in three days, but we can't get through a chapter of Genesis in three days. Tomorrow. Tomorrow on HD Radio, we will simply do one pericope. Abraham and Isaac. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go up the mountain with Abraham. We're going to go down the mountain with Abraham and Isaac. But before I let you go, I want to I, I want to I want to point you to the the Higher Things virtual conference. Go to higherthings.org and um, get the virtual conference. Get that virtual conference. Register for it. Um, higherthings.org. You get ten hours of content with great speakers. Uh, the the Roseboros, the Matt Richards, the the um, uh, Pastor Brad Drew, the Aaron Finkers of the world, um, uh, I'm not going to let Lestico ruin my day. Um, and so, um, so I, I want to let you know though, tomorrow, 2 p.m., we'll have Bible study. I do not want to miss going through Abraham with you. I just don't. I, I don't want you cheated. I don't want you cheated of Father Abraham. So 2 p.m. Bible study tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Check out that virtual conference. You get six months of premium Higher Things content. Go today. I'm Pastor Borkhart. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.